Yo guys, welcome back to a brand new PC Chill video, guys. Yes, another legacy video, back to back legacy videos. Like I promised, the support on the Empoleon video was awesome. So once again, guys, if you want to continue seeing legacy content, once again, just keep showing the support on the videos and leaving likes and all that good stuff. But today, guys, we're going to be looking at one of the most infamous rogues, one of the most infamous decks of all time, in my opinion. That is going to be Ross Cawthon's The Truth. Now, The Truth is a very cool deck. It came out of nowhere in Worlds of, I think, 2011. And the whole idea was you try to set up a Vile Plume and a Reuniclus. And what this combo does is you get the Vile Plume play, you lock items from being played, and then with Reuniclus, you constantly move the damage. And back in the day, we didn't have insane high HP Pokemon. The highest HP was like 130, 150, 160. Like, the HP wasn't that high back in the day. So it was really easy to not get one shot. And when you get Vile Plume up, there's nothing they could do. There's no plus powers, no lasers. I mean, laser wasn't around back then, but they couldn't do much. So this deck, when it sets up, and when it gets the Vile Plume Reuniclus combo going, you are in an in insanely good position. And there's a lot of other cool things. We have Blissey Prime to fully heal you. Um, the deck does play an anti Suicune Legend. This was a very hard card to get my hands on. Actually, this isn't even my bottom piece. I had to borrow this from my buddy Outcast. Um, but this... Entei Suicune Legend is a really cool attacker in this deck. It was one of the cards Rothkoth then played. It's actually a both a water and a fire type, which is pretty relevant since it can take out Pokemon weak to that type, especially being a fire type against Verizian Genesect. Um, now, this deck does obviously have to be converted into a more standardized Legacy format. Legacy is a lot different than the World's 2011 meta. Back then, the deck actually used Zekrom instead of Reshiram. The reason for Zekrom was because, at the time, cards like Tornadus and Yen Mega Prime were very popular, and they happened to be weak to Lightning, but those cards aren't very popular in, in Legacy. So I actually chose to swap those out with Reshiram, um, just so that we have a Fire Attacker against Verizian Genesect. This is our Verizian Genesect answer. Um, we do have this guy, obviously, but we also have this guy. This is going to be our version of Genesect Dancer instead of using Zekrom. So yeah, before we get in the video, guys, that was a long intro. Shout out to our sponsor, Car Cabin TCG. As always, guys, if you're ever looking for any PDCGO codes, get them over at Car Cabin. If you have any codes that you yourself want to trade in, that you do not want to use, trade them into Car Cabin. You can trade in codes and bulk cards and get some cash and in-store credit for your stuff. Of course, if you're looking for PCO codes, guys, get them over at Car Cabin TCG. Uh, if you're looking for Sword and Shield codes, get them over there. Of course, when Rebel Clash codes go up for pre-order very soon, Soon, you can pre-order your codes there and if you get anything from card cabin guys use code ldf at the checkout for a five percent discount on your order shout out to card cabin the sponsor use code ldf and let's take a look at this deck so this is a deck that's very infamous this is in my opinion one of ross cawthorn's most popular like decks um it's just such a cool deck like he played at worlds this was not an archetype before the world championships and he played at worlds and i'm pretty sure he got second place with it um, I don't think he got first. I'm pretty sure he got second, but like no one expected this deck. No one knew how to counter this deck. Just it just he played it and went with it. Now again, I have to, I've updated it a little bit with some new stuff. I have added in a Cure Me X um, as a Outrage. Like this deck does utilize Outrage because you can manipulate the damage with Reuniclus. Um, and I we have a lot more HP now to work with because back then the highest HP we had was this thing with 160 HP. But now that we have Cure and we have 180, so we have a little bit more HP to work with for the damage manipulation. I've also added some level balls, some ends to the deck. Ross Cawthorn's list originally played um, Copycat, and I think he played uh, Pokemon Collector. I've chosen not to play that. I'm still kind of sticking true to his formula. I'm still using the Don Fan. I'm still using the Ante Suicune. I'm still using the Cleffa with Eek. I'm still using the whole like Sage's Training Twins combo, and the energy is the exact same as he played, but I've updated a little bit more. I've even added a Mr. Mime. This deck loses pretty badly to Snipe Attacks, because Solos is only has 30 HP. Um, and this deck does lose to snipes because your opponent can snipe around the damage you're trying to lock up. So if your opponent just snipes around you, you can't do anything about it. So just having the mime is there to help you out. Let's take a look at the attacker. So of course Dawn Fan is your main, main, one of your, well, checking your main attacker. It's attacker earthquake does 60 damage, 10 damage to each your bench Pokemon. Obviously we can manipulate that damage with, um, the Reuniclus, but we have the mime to protect our bench from not having to worry about that. And of course, it is very good against Darkrai EX. Uh, again, the Reshiram is here. Uh, originally was Zekrom, but we don't have to worry about the Zekrom typing as much right now in Legacy. So I've chosen Reshiram instead to combine with Damage Swap. Um, I'm also, of course, uh, playing the Entei Suicune Legend. This is the infamous Legend card in this deck. This is the first time I've actually played a Legend in a video, I think. Now, its main attack... Sorry, guys. Is Bursting Inferno, which does 80 damage, and your opponent's active is now burned, and that's fine. Again, uh, you can do a lot of damage. You can't one-shot Verizian Genesect if they have a Verizian in play, because the burn damage won't count. But it's your main attack, 
And there's a legend piece. It's really cool to use. Uh, this does give up two prizes though, if it gets knocked out. And again, I've added in a Kyurem because of Outrage. Um, I am using Pichu to set up. I have chosen not to play Pokemon Collector. I don't really like it. I'd rather just use Playground to set up. I am still using Cleffa to set up because you can just spam Eek and draw into a new hand. Um, yeah, with that out of the way, let's just get into the games as a deck because this deck is going to be like 10 minutes if I go over every single card. But yeah, the whole combo, uh, we fall behind in prizes, use Twins, get the Reuniclus, get the Vileplume in play, get our main attacker in play, and then try to set up a board state where they can never take a one shot. And see if we can win any matches with this deck and see if this combo is still very any good in Legacy. We'll find out. All right, guys, jumping into our first match with the Truth, we're up against a pure fire deck, and I'm assuming this is going to be a Reshi Flosion deck, if I had to guess. It could also be an Embor deck. Uh, we'll have to see. I'm going to go first here, I think. Maybe that wasn't a good idea, actually. Okay. We get the Cleffa start. We get two Solosis. I don't think we need a bench both, though. And they are mulliganing. Okay, that's good. So we can get a better hand. I actually maybe shouldn't have went first, because I don't want to get knocked out by Verbank Laser, which doesn't even look at my opponent's plane. Doesn't look like they're playing the most amazing Legacy deck. I mean, that's the thing with the Legacy format. Sometimes you run into, like, the best Legacy decks, and then sometimes you just run into people that don't really have, like, amazingly built Legacy decks. It's just, like, expanded, in my opinion. Uh, let's see what we get here. There's Kyurem and Chansey. Those are two really good cards. The Kyurem in specific is going to be really good here. Drew a Sage's Training. Hmm. Uh, what are the odds they hit a DCE and a laser this turn to knock me out? I'm going to say very low. Uh, do I want to put the rainbow energy on the Kyurem? I think I do. I want to get this guy built up. And I'm going to pass. If this guy has a DC and a laser in his hand, I give up on life. But we have the Kyurem here to maybe attack if... Okay, we're good. See, so we draw here. Pokecom's good. We can get the um, Oddish down. I'm also kind of looking for Duosion. So let's go for Sage's Training. Uh, what are we taking here? I think we want Twins. Twins and Rainbow. We don't really need the Dawn Fan. We'll take Twins. We'll just get another Energy down on the Kyurem. We'll go for an Eek. I do want to try to get the Legend Half here. I think getting that Entei Suicune is going to be good because it is a Water type also. And all right, that's a pretty good hand. That is a pretty good hand. We're actually probably not gonna get knocked out here. We have Vile Plume and Reuniclus. Um, and okay, we have a lot we can do. Um, okay, they don't attack me for some reason. I'm actually not gonna put the Vile Plume play just yet because I don't want to. I don't want to put the item lock up just quite. We actually get the Legend half. No, they concede. No. Why would you concede? I had such a good. Oh, dang it, dude. That really sucks. I guess like the Kiram was just threatening. Thank. That just sucks. All right, we get into another game right away. I was expecting it to be a long wait. Um, okay, I already played against this guy earlier today. He is playing a Turbo Darkrai deck, which is actually really bad for us um, because the sniping can be annoying, but he does play a lot of items. I know that for a fact. So if we get the Vile Plume play, we're good. Oh, we get a Solosis start. <gasps> oh, we might just get we might just get KO'd here by Verbank Laser. That ain't good. This is my main issue with Legacy. Is Verbank Laser. He probably has it. Well, I mean, he doesn't have a supporter available to him. Oh, there's the laser. We just lost. Sadly, there is no 40 HP Solosis in the Legacy format. Oh, we aren't out just yet. You love to see it. Uh, there's Fampy. That's okay. We're in the game and we actually have our best attacker. So I can go for a Sage here and I think I will do it. Let me see if I can get anything good. We got Twins. Twins in the Mime, I think, are the two important cards we want to take. I was maybe trying to dig for the other legend half, not gonna lie. It's actually good we're not getting knocked out, though, going into my opponent's turn. Uh, this is all good. But yeah, Mr. Mime really helps this deck a lot, I found. There's a Juniper. And okay, they are losing a lot of Hypnotoxic Lasers. That is pretty good, but that's also less items they have to clunk their deck up. Which is not good. Okay, so we get Twins activated now, which means we can get Dawn Fan Energy. Though, to be fair, I want to set up my board a little bit better. Um... And they don't really have that great of a hand. Or, like, their setup's not that great. I could just kind of go for... I could play it slow. I can definitely get the Entei Suicune Raikou Legend into play here. So we do have the Rare Candy Vile Plume, so it's a good time to put that into play, I think. But again, if we get the Dawn Fan Energy, we can start attacking really early on... 
But I feel like I feel like my Fampy's gonna live the turn. I'm gonna go out on a gamble here and see if Fampy's gonna live. I also want to put the Entei Raikou. I, how do you put this into play? I've never done this before. Oh, there you go. So yeah, we have this big boy in play. It is way too small to read the text on my screen. And yeah, I'm gonna go on a gamble and say Fampy's not gonna get knocked out here. My opponent would need quite a bit of cards. And they don't have since they don't have an energy in the discard, I feel pretty safe. So that's why I kinda held that. There's a random receiver. That's a Juniper. I was hoping that would get them an N. They're probably gonna get a knockout here now. They had an N in their hand. Yikes. They actually will get the can on my Fampy. And then we can put the Entei Suicune in play. Then we need to get a Reuniclus in play ASAP. But we also have Blissey Prime. There's a Dark Claw that's pretty big for them. They're getting they're playing a lot of items. Alright, we do live the turn. Uh there's the energy. So we can't get Rickini Plume, but I'm not going to do it. It's too early to do that. I think we still need to kind of set our board up a little bit better. Let's go for the N. Uh, there's the Dawn Fan. There is the Solosis. But unfortunately, the rest of our hand is not very playable. The rest of our hand does kind of suck. At least we have a DC for this guy, though. But my opponent does play Enhanced Hammer. I know that for a fact. Because I've played against this guy already. We don't have Cleffa either. I guess we're just going to have to be in top deck mode for a couple turns. Uh, we get an Earthquake off, though, which is good. Yeah, we're in top deck mode right now. Unless my opponent ends me, which is possible. They are down two ends, though. But they have played two Junipers. Uh, they can Verbank laser me. That's pretty scary. Actually, Donphan gets knocked out if he does have Verbank. Or if he has a laser, which it looks like my opponent might have here. They just need a switch and a laser. They could also have tried to catch her out the Gloom. Yep, they have the laser. That last card in their hand is a Professor Juniper 2, which is really annoying. No, it's an N! We're still in the game. All right, nice. The problem is if Donphan gets knocked out here, we're in trouble. So I'm actually praying they don't get a switching card. Um, nice, we got the plume. We got a Duosion. Okay, this is really good. If they don't knock me out, we're in a good spot, I think. We're in a good spot. Okay, we're chilling. We're big chilling. So let's get Duosion. I can hold the hand, too. Um, I am going to put Rush Ram in play. I mean, we have the Reuniclus. Nah, we're going to pot. We're going to pot. Actually, I want to find energy for the Entei Suicune. There we go. There's the comb. We can't play it to get Reuniclus, which is a little unfortunate, but we'll see. We just need to get a teammate or a twin, sorry, and we're good. We're going to... We're getting there, though. We're getting there. They're, they're definitely going to knock me out here no matter what. They're definitely going to get a knockout here. And they are... They have actually played a lot of their items already, which is kind of bad, but they haven't... I don't know. We'll see. I'm assuming... Like, they have to have a lot of items. I know they play Energy Switch and stuff. Ooh, they just pass. Okay, can we get a Reuniclus top deck? We do not. So we're going to die to poison here. I'm fine with that. We can just bring in the Reshi Ram. He can't knock it out. He can't kill Reshi Ram. We are going to lose our Fighting Attacker, which is a little unfortunate. But whatever. We're just bringing the Reshiram. Again, he can't one-shot the Reshiram here because the Vile Plume shuts off the laser. We have Kirim too, which is pretty good for us. We just need... We probably need to get another Dolphin to play, though. I think we're in a fine spot now. Um, do we really want to bench the Kirim? I don't know. Do we even want to attack with Outrage? I don't even know if we want to use Outrage here. I think we'll bench this just to kind of like not get end into a bad hand. But at the same time, we need Chansey on our bench. See, I kind of wish my bench setup was a little bit better. I'm just going to keep passing. There's no need to outrage him. There's no need to hit him with an outrage here. I mean, he, he has played five supporters, so he'll run out eventually. And another Juniper, he might just deck out. We can maybe, if we can get the Reuniclus in play and the Blissey Prime, I think we can deck this guy out. I mean, I don't know if it's possible, but I think it is. I mean, once the rush frame gets knocked out, we can hopefully attack with this. We'll see if we can draw something. We're in top deck mode right now. No, we are not. Nice. Uh, we're not going to bench the Kirim. I want to, but again, I, I need room for Blissey and probably another Fampy too, if I'm going to be honest. There's the Reuniclus. We also got a uh, Rainbow Energy and I gave, got the Reuniclus or the Sage. I don't even know what I'm saying at this point. I'm just hyped that our hand is this good. I think we want to save this Reuniclus damage for when we kind of whack him here with this guy. 
There's no way really to put this damage in my opinion. I think we let the Reshiram get knocked out and then attack with our Entei Suicune. Right? We could do this actually. We can put 10 damage on this, fully heal this guy. This makes sense because now, like, there's no way he could do, like, I'm pretty sure, I guess he could knock me out with like a Sableye. No, he's down to Sableye. Okay, so I, like, I don't even think he can do 10 damage to me. I, th I think this is actually a fine play. Hit him for 140, nearly got a knockout, but then we can start attacking with this guy next turn. I think we're in a pretty good spot to win this. So we have the ability to use B Bursting Inferno. Oh, an N coming in? Okay, that's fine. As long as we don't whiff anything here, we should be okay. Okay, we got an energy. We got Seeker. That's good, too. That's really good for us. We need to we need to get the Kyurem. He didn't get any energy on this, either. This is really good. I don't even know how much energy he plays. He's already down two in the discard. Five, set. He's down seven energy. There's a Reshi Ram. Uh, we're going to have to bench that. We're going to have to touch a DC to this, which is fine. And we can go for a Burning Inferno, taking a knockout. My opponent cannot attack me with Darkrai again this turn because of the fact he can't play Dark Patch. And now we're back in the driver's seat. There's a Fan P. There's a Sage. All right, we're in a good spot. He's also burned most of his ends. Yeah, he's played all his... He, he has no ends left. So we are quite literally in the best spot we could be in right now. Let's go for a Sage. Uh, probably just take Seeker and some energy. Take the Rainbow. Want to bench Blissey here, so we want to be ready for that. Yeah, we're just going to continue Bursting Inferno. We are going to two-shot this Darkrai with the Bursting Inferno, even if he doesn't stay burned. But yeah, this is the deck for you. Even if he attacks me, again, we just move the damage. We have to try to find a Blissey and a Chansey at this point. But at this point, guys, I don't think he can win the game. It's not looking likely. He's also most likely out of supporters. And again, since most of his deck is items, like what can he do? He's down at seven energy. We could just keep going Bursting Inferno. We almost have a knockout. He has 10 HP. That's a bit of a rip. I don't have a sniping attack, but it is what it is. He's going to run out of Pokemon to bring in eventually. I mean, if we played Landorus in this deck, that would have been pretty nice, I guess. But yeah, we're good. We should probably play the Sage, actually, to try to get that Blissey and Chansey. I probably should have done that. Looks like we're going to get two more prizes here. Yeah, we should have done Sage earlier. We can't use Twins anymore, so... Well, I guess we still technically could, but I'll just take the Blissey and the Dawn Fan. We have six cards left. I guess... I don't think we can deck out, right? We should be okay. I think we still have a Brotherhood's New Theory. Yeah, we still have a Pont, I think. I think we're fine. There's a Calm. Maybe we prize Chansey, I didn't know. I don't even think he can do anything, though. Like, uh, he'd have to have something insane here to, like, prevent me from losing. Or from winning. Okay, there's the Darkrai. There's the Night Spear for 90 damage. Again, we can move that damage around like there's no tomorrow. He can't knock me out at this point. Yep. Let's put 90 damage. We do need to get Chansey. I might have prized it. If I prized it, that's a bit of a misstep on my end. We might have to end up benching this Dawn Fan, too, at some point. If we run out of damage counters. But I just literally don't see how he's going to be able to win this. Like, it's like impossible in my opinion. But we also have Seeker, right? We could just Seeker the Reshi Ram and fully heal it. Like, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. Like, when this deck sets up, it is OP. Like, look at how OP this is. Like, look at this. It's just so OP. Legend attacking a Darkrai. I mean, my guy. What can you do? I might even change up the thumbnail for this video. I might even make the thumbnail the Entei Raikou attacking. Or the Entei Suicune. What is Suicune's other? What does the other attack do? I can't read it. The text is so dang small. I'd have to like literally zoom in to see it. I can't, I can't see what that text is, but whatever. There's a Sableye. Okay, I was kind of worried he could confuse Raimi, but no, he's going to Night Spear. He has accepted his fate. Once again, guys, he can't do it. There's Secure, and we would have been just had more damage. Yeah, okay. Like that was just... The deck sets up. It is OP. And that is the deck for you there in a nutshell. It is very, very strong. There's a reason why Ross Cawthorn did so well. Like, this deck is just so infamous. Uh, I'm just going to take the D the 60 coins. But yeah, there you go. There's the there's, there's deck in action for you. And we actually got to use the uh, the Legend piece in that game, which I'm pretty happy about because I was kind of worried we weren't we weren't able to use this. Um, yeah, so we had two punts. I think we had an end we could still use. So I, there's no way it would have been decked out, right? 
The Sableye was a little concerning, though, not gonna lie. All right, guys, let's get into another match with the deck here. We're up against a Garchomp deck. Ooh, this is interesting. Uh, we do happen to play a lot of special energy, which is kind of what scares me here. A deck like Garchomp could very easily counter us because, again, we do rely pretty heavily on special energy. Uh, do I want to go first? I think I will. Uh, the, the Pichu is not that great here because if my opponent sets up, that's really bad for us. We get a Mime Oddish start. It's not that great. Um, our hand is not that good. We do have Vile Plume, but we know Rare Candy. We don't really need the Vile Plume because Garchomp sets up pretty easily. There's a Fan P. Okay, there's a Dawn Fan. We're getting somewhere. They get to play Sage's Training next turn, which is kind of feels bad, man. Not the worst supporter they could ever copy. Uh, you know, Sage, they actually had to lose cards with Sage's Training, technically, so I hope they're ready to play it. Okay, they bench a Kangaskhan. What does this do? Just 20 damage, flip for coins. So I guess that's how he gets Pokemon in play? Is this a Garchomp? This has to be a Garchomp deck. Okay, that catcher failed. That could have been big. You could have brought it in the Oddish. I think I might DC Retreat into Fampy here. If we can get Dawn Fan in play off of the Sage's Training, that'll be pretty good. The nice thing is, they have to choose two cards, so they might end up losing some important pieces here off this Sage's Training. So hopefully they do lose something like, say, their Attacker's Energy would be nice to see lost, because once we have Isle Plume, they can't play Super Rod or anything, so... Yeah, this Sage's Training hopefully is actually a bad thing. I mean, it's, it's close enough to a Juniper, because you never want to hit a Juniper when you do thing. And yeah, they already, yeah, see, they lost a Rock Guard. We don't have to worry about that. That's pretty good. Yeah, so they are playing a Garchomp deck. It's a little scary because we do rely on Special Energy, which is pretty bad. But we'll see if we can get out of this. There's a Swablu. That's fine. I don't really care for the Altaria too much, as long as they can ever one-shot us. And there's the Vile Plume. I don't think I want to put that in play right now. It's way too early. Uh, we'll take the Cleffa and the Solosis, I think. We are going to lose um, another Vile Plume, as long as we have the other one in the deck. I think I'm actually going to go into Eek this turn. This seems pretty good to me. We could go Vile Plume here. Uh, is it worth it to go Vile Plume? I feel like it might actually be. They have four cards in their hand, but the, no, they get a free portrait off. We're most likely going to support her. But if we can get into a bunch of twins, we don't have to worry about that. Should I wait to go Vile Plume? Or should I go Vile Plume now? I don't think we need to go Vile Plume right now. I feel like we should just go Eek and just play it safe. Don't want to item lock him. We still, we still have a few items we can play ourselves. Okay, well, we got the Vile Plume back. And there's a twin, so they actually won't get any value out of Portrait here, which is really good. I might regret not putting the Vile Plume play if they just go Rare Candy Garchomp. Which they aren't doing, which is good. So we can probably knock out the Smeargle here if we can get into a Dawn Fan off of our top deck. And for some reason, they're attaching to Smeargle. Okay, I guess they could knock me out, but they need double heads, which I swear if they get, that's actually going to be so bad. But then we get twins. Actually, I don't care if they knock me out. I want them to. We have a twins in our hand. It's actually not the worst thing ever if they do kill me. I'm a little scared of Dragon Slice on Garchomp. Or Dragon Blade, whatever it's called. That the Garchomp's second attack can actually one-shot my stuff if I'm not careful. If they get too many Altarius in play, that's actually going to be really bad. But it looks like they don't have access to it right now. That last card in their hand better not be a Professor Juniper or an N. That would really be, that'd be annoying. And it looks like it isn't. <laughs> My man actually gets the double heads. Wow. Okay, well, the good news is it looks like he's in top deck mode. So that's good. And the better news is we can actually get a bit of a setup here. And there's a pawn, which is nice. Yeah, I don't even, actually I don't even care that he knocked me out. This is actually fine. We can get the Reuniclus. We can get the Dawn Fan Prime. Could actually go for another twins here if I wanted to. No, we're taking a knockout. We can't go twins. Okay, we're just gonna get Reuniclus and Dawn Fan. I am gonna put the Reuniclus in play because I want this guy into play. He does play catcher. He could knock out Reuniclus. No, he can't. He can only do 100. Okay, never mind. Reuniclus can't even get knocked out. And let's just go for Earthquake. Take out the Smeargle. We have a pot in our hand. We're taking out his top deck option. Hopefully, hopefully he he's still in top deck. Hopefully he doesn't have an energy to go with his Garchomp he can get into play. Hey, he can thin his deck out a little bit with, with Dragon Call, but as long as he stays in top deck mode and doesn't have an energy to attack, I am fine. Because we actually can't two chart. Sorry, I just ate dinner. I apologize if I'm like, kind of like, I don't even know what you call it. It's like when, when you talk too much, when you after you eat, but let's see if he has an attack here. Worst case scenario, he does attack me. Best case scenario, he doesn't. I'm tempted actually to hold the Vile Plume. I don't know if I want to put the Vile Plume in play. Mm, I still want to play like my comms and stuff. 
We should probably put the plume in play, though. I mean, he hasn't played... He's only played 34 cards. If he doesn't have a supporter here, he might have a bunch of items in his deck that he might just draw into. So I think we should just go Vile Plume and just say, screw it. There's red. It's an end. All right, I'm fine with that. I actually don't really mind getting an end here. As long as we still get Vile Plume. Okay, so you're actually going to go with a Bianca. That's fine by me. That's actually perfect. That is fine by me. And here's where the fun begins. Mock Cut. Mock Cut is pretty bad for us. I honestly... That's, mock Cut's going to be a little tough to deal with. Uh, let's put the plume down. Go for the Professor Oak's new theory. And I think here we're looking for the Entei combo. Ugh, if we didn't put the plume play, we would have had it. We do have Kiram though, which is fine. He can't one-shot Donphan either with the uh, Dragon Blade, which is at least pretty good for us. And I kind of want to save my basic energy for the Entei Suicune Legend. But we can't get into play just yet until we get more supporters. He actually will end us here, I guess. So maybe we should just bench the Kirim. Because he's going to end us, I think. He's going to end us, right? So we should probably just bench this. I don't really want to bench this guy just yet. But I do want to build it up. Okay. Let's just go for the Earthquake. Whatever. We're not going to bench it. The sad thing is we can't two-shot this. So we have to hit with Earthquake three times. <laughs> Which is a little annoying, but whatever. It is what it is. Dawn fan's not that great in this matchup anyways. The better attackers are obviously going to be Reshi Ram and the Entei Suicune. It might be pretty good here too. My opponent can go for a Dragon Blade, which is kind of scary. That could... He could dump his items with that. And he could also... He can't one-shot me as long as he doesn't put another Altaria in play. That Dragon Blade attack is not going to do much. He can't one-shot. It's only going to do 100. It's only going to do 100 unless he benches another Altaria. Which, it's pretty easy for him to get Altarias in play because of his abilities. Okay, he's actually choosing not to end me, which is fine. Would have preferred if he did, but whatever. But yeah, this, this matchup is going to be pretty hard to win just because of that attack mock cut. Mock cut is pretty bad. He's actually going to choose to go for 100 damage. He loses an energy and another Altaria. But we're just drawing more items, which you don't like to see. All right, we're just going to have to keep moving the damage off the Dawn fan here. We'll eventually knock this thing out. And he can't get the energy back, so if he continues to do Dragon Blade and loses more energy, that's actually fine. We could actually knock out our own Mr. Mime here if we wanted to. And then we get Twins back, so we have that we have that option available to us. I don't think I want to do that. I think we're just going to just yeah, move the damage around. You know, we we have a couple, we have at least another couple turns to survive here, and I honestly want to keep doing Dragon Blade. I, I'd be fine with that. I'd be fine with that. He could end me here. We probably should bench this. I'm probably going to regret that if he ends me here, which I'm, I'm assuming he's going to end me. We'll find out, though. We'll find out. I honestly want him to keep doing Dragon Blade because, again, if he keeps losing important stuff like more energy, I'm fine with that. I don't know how much energy he plays, but we'll see. Okay, he's going to retreat. Yeah, he can he can play a Koi, too. Ooh. Okay, that actually helps us out quite a bit. That's a huge card for us. Champions Festival would actually be a pretty cool card to put in here, too. Um, but there's no room. Tropical Beach was really in Ross Cawthorn's list, but alas, I don't have it. Alright, let's get heads on this. Oh no, it's not a coin flip. That's OP. He's only doing 40 a turn now? That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah, I think we can, we can probably just run him out with this one Dawn fan until we can get another better attacker in play. This is pretty good. I actually wouldn't mind maybe getting two Dawn fans, but I, I want to attack with this Entei Suicune again. I feel like it's going to be good. I want to have something that can two-shot him. Earthquake. Sucks we haven't found a supporter yet. If we do get a Twins, I'm probably going to knock out the Pichu maybe even just to... Yeah, I might knock out Pichu. We could also find Blissey at this point and heal our entire board, which would be pretty good. Okay. Let's see if he goes for the Dragon Blade. He's going to run out of energy eventually. He can't just keep swapping between the two Garchomps. Because he can't use Super Rod. Unless he plays like 25 energy. Which I pray he doesn't. I don't think he does. Alright, there's a Dragon Blade. Discarding two cards once again. Losing two more energies. you love to see it. There's an N of our own. We don't really need that right now. Let's do this. We can leave Dawnfan with 10 damage on it, I guess. We really have to. I really want to... Maybe... Should we just end him? 
Or should we just bench this? Because we can start one shotty stuff with this Kieran, but I don't want to give him two easy prizes. Um, okay, let's just keep moving the damage around. I almost put on Mr. Mime by accident. I gotta be careful about that. I gotta, I gotta make sure I don't put damage on Mr. Mime because that might happen at some point. And before he has like something crazy that can like knock out my bench. Can you imagine that? We still have a decent amount of stuff to wall to. And if worst case scenario, um, worst case scenario, we, we can put damage on our, um, on our Kiram if we have to. I wouldn't mind finding a Seeker or a Blissey soon though, not gonna lie. So he can retreat again, which is fine. But again, he's gonna run out of energy eventually. But considering he has all this random energy, I feel like he might actually be playing more than like 12 energy, which is kind of annoying. Let's see if he retreats. But yeah, this is a deck for you guys. As you can see, you set up, you set up. I'm trying to think, like what could he have? One, two, three, four, five. It's actually really good he didn't get that rock run in play, actually. I'm just thinking about that now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's played nine energy. I have a bad feeling this guy has more than nine, because Garchomp does not need nine energy. So I have a bad feeling this guy well actually it does need nine energy. I have a bad feeling this guy has like 12, 15 energy. Considering he doesn't seem to be playing the most like amazing Garchomp list, you know what I mean? So I have a bad, yeah, he's already got like 12, do you see, it's already 10 energy, that's already a lot. He's gonna keep doing Dragon Blade though. Oh my god, this, why does this guy play so much energy? Okay, there's a Seeker, about time. That's actually really good. Dude, this center, thank you for putting that into play, bro. I, I salute you. I salute you. He can heal his own Garchomp, I guess, with the Seeker. I honestly don't care, it's better we heal ourselves. Here we go, Seeker. I guess we should Seeker the Kyurem. So we'll bench the Kyurem now instead of the Reshiram. Let's see what he returns here. Okay, he's gonna heal his Garchomp. Uh, does he get all the cards back with that? Oh, he does, so he keeps the energy. That's fine. Okay, here we go, continuous, continuous stuff. Really would like to see a chance. See, maybe we should end him. Maybe we should end him here. Honestly. Oh, he concedes. All right. He's just like, I've had enough of this. I don't blame him, man. Dude, this, this deck, you can have some very long games with this deck. We're lucky that game was 12 minutes long. But there you go. Once again, the deck set up. Yeah, we did what we needed to do. We only were, the only thing we are missing there was just not finding Chansey and then getting Blissey. But that was pretty fine. Probably do one more game. All right, guys. Let's do one more game with this deck to close out today's legacy video. And we're up against BH Lockdown here with, it looks like, another Darkrai deck. Which is fine, because we have Dawn fans. So I actually, I'd probably prefer to play against this than maybe Verizian Genesec. Because Verizian Genesec, at the very least, could cripple you because of Megalo Cannon and Red Signal. He's so actually let me go first, which is interesting. And, oh, no. This hand's not good, and we also uh, might get KO'd here. Okay. We've been spared. Hmm, would I want Eek or would I want Playground more? I probably want Playground more, right? Okay, we can do Level Ball. Let me get that Oddish in play because we do have Gloom in our hand. And pray he doesn't Verbank laser me. He's probably going to find it in all honesty. He's like 200,000% going to get the Verbank laser here. Okay, but he has to Juniper. That's cool. Uh, loses a bunch of items. Okay. Would have preferred more supporters, but whatever. There's a comp search. Okay. So if he has either the Verbank or the laser in his hand, my Cleffa will be a goner. Don't really care if he knocks out Cleffa, though, because we have twins in playground in our hand. So it's not the end of the world, though. To be fair, I probably would prefer to use E. Maybe we should just let Cleffa get knocked out. But at the same time, I want to take my bench up. I don't really know. Oh, he's actually choosing to go for Smeargle, which is fine. He cannot do anything with it. So that is perfectly fine by me. Oh, he's already building this up. He put a... Ooh, that dark energy is pretty bad. That's 10 more damage he can do, which is not good. We need to get Dawn Fan. Hey, that Twins is not working. And before that last two cards, his hands Verbank Laser. It's probably going to be either an N or a Juniper, though. Or Random Receiver to get one of those two cards, which finds him the Juniper. So he has that uh, Juniper next turn, unfortunately. Okay. 
I don't really think we need to mention the Chansey right now. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go for the Pichu. We're going to go Playground. We're going to get Solosis, Fampy, and the Mr. Mime. As long as we get Donphan going, we're good. We can get Vileplume play next turn, which is good by me. But I do want to set up a little bit more, so I don't know. I am kind of scared of Pokemon Catcher. Okay, he plays two Smeargles. Spirit Tomb's fine. We don't play any Ace Specs in this deck because we don't need to. It's like the one deck that doesn't need Ace Specs that can actually perform pretty well without him because it's like you don't need him, right? Because like all Ace Specs are like unplayable with Vile Plume in play. All right, he has a Switch. And that's a Juniper, obviously. All right, let's see what he's got. I'm a little scared of a Pokemon Catcher here. Um, he's getting more energy in play, which is a little scary too. Should be fine though. There's an Ultra Ball. I'm a little scared of like a Junk Arm too, maybe getting back that Dark Claw. I don't want him to do too much damage. I don't even think he grabbed anything with that Ultra Ball. Ah, he had a Dark Claw, no! And a Bicycle. Okay, we need to get Vileplume in play ASAP, I think. Oh my gosh, he's getting all the energy in play. That is not good. Maybe we should just go for another E round. I don't know. There's the Catcher Tails. Oh, thank, thank heavens. He could go. He could have a junk arm in his hand though, but he can't play it, so it doesn't matter. Unless he has another bicycle. He's actually gonna go with another uh, Smeargle play. You can't do anything with it. What are you doing? But we can't even attack the Pichu. That's why I was like, "What are you doing? You, you can't attack the Pichu." I'm, I'm dumb. Hopefully we wake up here so we can go for an Eek. That would actually be amazing if we wake up. Oh, we don't wake up. Yeah, hate to see it. That's fine. We still okay. I'm fine as long as we stay asleep. I'm actually fine with this to force him to get a Verbank Laser, which at this point I don't even think he plays. I would have seen one of them by now. Like no cap. Let's see what he's doing next. He does have two Dark Rise in play, which is scary. We also he's playing a lot of his items. So like at this point, the Vile Plume isn't very like he's good, but like the Vile Plume is not gonna put it, put in as much work as we want him to. Let's see though. We really need to go for Eek there. Oh, he has another catcher. He plays two, but he's thankfully getting more tails. Thank heavens. Let's see if he actually can even move. He's played six energy and he's already played a float. Maybe the Smeargle stuck. Okay, he does play Verbank Laser. Um, So we either wake up here or he gets... A th oh, he's going for another catcher. Okay, it's rid of another Juniper, which I like to see. He's going for these catchers here, but does he even have a way to attack? Please don't get heads. Oh, Dude, we're so lucky. Oh, he had a bicycle. Yeah, he has 12 cards left. The Vile Plume's not even that good at this point. Oh, he's going for another Junk Arm. If only we had the Vile Plume played, none of this would happen. I don't even know what he's going to knock out, though. I guess he has to knock out the Fampy. But then we just sit behind an Eek and a Twins. So it doesn't really matter. Let's see if he decides to. Okay, get your own energy. That's good. Because we got Vile Plume in here. He's not going to have stuff. He's going for... He really wants a knockout. Please tell me you're going to get Quad Tail. I don't get this luck with ADP. ADP, eat your heart out. I already know my luck in the Limitless Qualifier 2 is going to be bad. Please wake up. Oh, no. My guy, why you no wake up? There's a Sage. All right, let's try to get a Vile Plume here. We don't get one. Well, that's not good. I actually don't want to take another Sage because I don't want to give him a free Sage's training. To be fair, though, again, he is kind of in deck out range at this point. So maybe it's actually fine to give him a Sage. Uh, let's just take... Let's stay energy and twins. I don't want to give him a Sage's training. I just don't want to give him a supporter. Sucks we can't wake up. <sighs> Pichu, why you gotta stay asleep so long? This kind of sets us back a little bit. But we should be okay. He could actually have an N here too. He hasn't played a single N yet, which is a problem. Oh, he doesn't have one. Nice. Smeargle's actually stuck. Okay. There's a Pont. That's pretty good. Let's go for Twins. We'll get Duosion and Vile Plume. I actually don't know if I want to do Eek here because we can keep sending back with Twins. I actually don't really feel like doing Eek. He gets a free Professor Oak's new theory though. Okay, maybe we should do Eek. We should take advantage of this. Let's go for it, whatever. We have, we, still have, we have four twins. We should be okay, right? We should be okay. Okay, we gave him an N, so we're actually not going to keep the same, but we stay asleep. That's pretty good. We do stay asleep. You'll love to see it. 
He's probably gonna end me here, unfortunately. So we are gonna lose our Dawn fan. He could do Seeker. Um, I'm actually glad I benched this Chansey then, because there's nothing I want to pick up. Because even if I pick up the Mime, he gets an extra 30 damage in. So I'm actually fine with the Chansey getting Seeker. But he's definitely going to go for an end here. He's going to give me a new hand. He sees the Dawn fan. He's probably like, yo, give me a new hand. But at the same time, we can get a Twins here, and I'll be pretty happy. Again, though, I feel like we could deck him out. I, does he? How much energy has he played? Two, five. That other Dark Rise built up. Maybe, because I don't think you can use the Seeker or Dark. Oh, he actually does do Seeker. All right, fine by me. I don't know what he can bench here that can help him. So he's played four basic Darks, six basic Darks, two Seeker special Darks. You can't use special Dark with Smeargle. Is he trapped? He might be trapped. Oh, Cleffa, you gotta not stay asleep. There's a Twins top deck. All right, we're, 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 we're big chilling. Uh, we're just gonna keep, we're just gonna go twins again. We're probably gonna get the Entei Raikou Suicune soon. Well, now we're just waiting to wake up, but we're just gonna keep, we're just gonna bench this Chansey, just have Seeker bait. We're chilling. We do wake up, so he actually can take a KO here, which I don't really care about. If he wants to, there's a portrait. He could end me, of course. He has seven cards left. Let's see if he ends me again. He can keep spamming Seeker and putting stuff back in his hand, which can help him if he wants to not deck out in a weird way. It looks like he's going for that. Right, whatever. I'll keep this Chansey for as long as I need it. I'll keep firing back at you. He won't even get access to Twins with Portrait anyways, even if we KO'd this and he went to his other Smeargle. Maybe we should just not attack. I mean, it, does he even have anything? Like, it seems like this guy doesn't even have anything left to work with. Like, does he even have any energy left? Maybe he prized his last few basic Darks. Maybe that's why he can't move the Smeargle. We might have just won by just locking him completely. Is that the case? It might be the case, because he just doesn't seem to have any basic darks left. Though that dark eye is one-shotting my Dawn fan, which is kind of scary. Is it one-shotting me? Uh, yeah, it is. It's doing 140, so that dark eye can already one-shot me. It's gonna keep passing. We're fine. I don't really know if I want to lose Clefo because we do want that free free, free, free retreat pivot. I'm not gonna bother attacking him if he doesn't have any energy. There's no point. We might have just won the game by just completely locking him out. That might have been what happened here. This might have been what happened. Okay, that never mind. He can actually seeker the dark cry, which is I didn't think of that. Oh my god, I didn't think of that. That's really bad. That is pretty bad, not gonna lie. We're gonna have to set up another Dawn fan, I think. Or we could get the RDL. Oh, never mind. He's not gonna do that. Sure. I'm just gonna chill. He doesn't seem to. I guess he could end. He. I guess maybe he wants to end and go for that in the same turn. I don't know. I'm glad I have this Chansey, though, for, like, Seeker Bait. Yeah, I didn't think he could do that. But, like, I don't know why he hasn't retreated yet. I guess he doesn't want to attack me because of Dawn Fan? I guess we could build this guy up for Heavy Impact, technically. We could also just try to do Eek here because we can potentially be invulnerable. I don't even know what's going on at this point. My opponent's got four cards left. He's got to, he's got to attack eventually. I know he's probably scared of attacking. We probably should honestly build up the Dawn fan. If only we had more HP though, because this thing's gonna knock me out. Let's see if he goes for Seeker again. Or am I actually gonna deck out? I I don't even know what's going on at this point. Okay, there's there's an energy for the Keldeo. So yeah, he's getting ready for this. So I guess now is the time we attack. Or should we just build up? Should we just build up heavy impact and just say, if you even want to attack, I have heavy impact ready to go. I just wish we could knock this out.
So we could go Earthquake now. Um, take our prize. Then we get knocked out by this Darkrai. Then we don't have another attacker ready to go. So we should probably we should probably play aggressive now. I actually I don't know. I'm just let's just get this moving. Let's just let's just get this moving. Whatever, screw it. Should we all? Or should we just get the? I don't know. We gotta get the anti Raikou because we want to be able to wall. How do you bench that? There you go. I was gonna say. Okay, let's just get this ball rolling. Let's just start taking some prizes. You know, the rainbow's really good, especially if he ends me here. I'm actually glad the Cleffa is in play, because just having that fruit tree pivot is actually kind of useful. Anyway, again, we can always knock it out if we really want to. And then bench the Kyurem. Yeah, he could probably just... He could infinitely loot me there, I think, with that... With the N and the... Especially when I draw Professor Oak's new theory. I feel like we just... We had to start attacking eventually. This, this is going to be a stalemate. It's probably going to be another hour-long video, or very close to an hour long, because, again, this deck has very long games. Oh, he's got another Dark. How much is he doing? He might actually be able to one-shot this. He's doing 100 and... Oh, he's doing 140. So I was 10 damage off. Okay, my math was off there. I thought he was doing more damage. Whatever. Let's put that there. Take that off. Put that there. We do have a Seeker in our hand, so I'm going to bench this. We're just going to go Bursting Inferno. We are going to two-shot this, which is good. This is the scariest attacker he has in play. I don't think we can get one shot. If he one-shots me here, though, <laughs> that's going to be pretty awful. So he hasn't played any ends yet. We have to consider... We have to keep that in mind. He hasn't played a single end yet. So I'm, I'm going to be try. I'm going to try to be careful with what supporters I play. Other than Seeker. Hmm. I, f I feel like he's doing more. Okay, so he is going to end me now. That is totally fine. It's totally fine. He's going to get less cards, which is actually pretty good. If he just draws a bunch of items here, that's perfect. There's a Seeker. Okay, that's all we needed is a Seeker, pretty much. He might Seeker me. We'll just take the Kirim back. He's probably going to go Professor Oak's new theory, though, right? No, Seeker, okay. Well, there goes his Keldeo play. I don't know why I did that. So how much is this thing doing? 110 with the with the with the Dark Claw, that's 110, 120, 130, 140. So yeah, he can really never one-shot this, I don't think. We're just gonna attack him. We're just gonna bye bye. Yeah, as long as he can never one-shot this Entei Suicune, we should be okay. Should be Gucci. But yeah, the truth, guys. This is why uh, Ross Compton took second place. No one saw this deck coming. There's a Blissey. That's pretty nice. We can to get Chansey. The only way he could really stop me would be something like a Confuse Ray attack, honestly. That's like, yeah, it's just he could try to confuse us or something. But if he doesn't have that, we're fine. As long as he can never one-shot me, I'm happy. As long as we have another big attacker like Kieran, we're happy to. But yeah, clicking, clicking away, doing this, click done. Burst Inferno for 100 damage. And yeah, let's see if my opponent can do anything at this point. Again, I don't think they can. It's just not looking too good for them. And if they want to go that Smeargle play again, I will gladly accept a Seeker to return this Kieran. But he's already played two Smirkles, so I don't think he has it. I think we've won the game, guys. I think it's safe to say we probably won this game. As long as he can never one-shot me. We got our next two prizes. He can end me to two. We should probably Seeker this Kyurem now, then. To be honest. Just because he might end me to two here. But then he returns his own Darkrai. Hmm, maybe we shouldn't play an end. I don't know. 
It's so nice having 180 HP to work with right now because back in the day you didn't have this luxury. I don't really know why I'm putting 20 on Vile Plume, but whatever. All right, we'll take a knockout here, and yeah, pretty much all she wrote, folks. I don't know how my opponent can win at this point. All that's really missing is to get energy for this guy. We might get into two. It's something I'm worried about. Then we lose our Seeker, but we knock him out. Oh, no, Juniper, he has given up. Okay, so we had no way to recover anything. So yeah, that is game, pretty much. That is pretty much game. It doesn't look like my opponent can win now. But yeah, that is the truth, guys. When you play against these type of decks that can't one-shot you and you get this lock set up, guys, this deck is, like, literally invincible. It's, like, it's so cool. Yeah, he just, like, he's just like, I can't do anything, bro. Like, I can't, like, my god, what can I do? You can't do anything but concede and lose to the truth. The truth, at the end of the day, always wins. But yeah, that'll wrap up the video, guys, on this deck. Shout out to Ross Cawthorn. It's relevant to make this video, I feel like, because, again, he just did pretty well this past weekend at the Limitless Qualifier with that Spirit Tomb ADP deck. But yeah, this deck is really fun to play. Um, it honestly is kind of expensive getting all the stuff, especially getting those that Entei Suicune cost you like probably upwards of 50 packs to get both pieces. Because Entei Suicune is one of the better legend halves to get, other than, of course, Rayquaza Deoxys. But anyways, that's the video, guys, on the truth. If you guys enjoyed the video, once again, guys, drop a like for the legacy content. Tomorrow's video probably will not be a legacy video. But again, there will be more legacy content to come. We have about a week until rebel clash comes out on pdcgo next thursday a week from today when you're seeing this so rebel clash coming soon i'm gonna surprise you guys with some more content and of course more legacy videos to come i don't think i'll be uploading much legacy after rebel clash but once the season dies down we'll have more legacy content but yeah thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed drop a like subscribe down below again if we can reach 8k subs by next thursday i'll give away a reverse hollow jirachi it's that simple follow me on twitter down below we just hit 300 uh, followers so if you guys want to keep following me there follow me and shout out to our sponsor, Carcrime and TCG. Make sure you use code LDF if you become any code. When, sword, or when Rebel Clash codes go live for pre-order, pre-order them there. And I'll see you guys later.